This is a continuation of my series on installing rainwater harvesting tanks. In this episode, I'll show the excavation and pouring of a low retaining wall, or curb if you like, for the foundation of this 500 gallon tank. In the previous episodes, I showed all the steps I took to install a 1200 gallon tank. This smaller tank sits in our garden and collects water from this timber frame style pavilion I built a few years ago. And I'll be adding an off-grid 12 volt solar system and pump to supply the drip irrigation to beds and hanging planters around the pavilion. There will be some similarities in the installation of these two tanks, so if you've already watched the first series then you may see me repeat a few of the steps, so I'll try to move quickly here. In the next few episodes, I'll detail the construction of the cedar and corrugated panels that surround the tank, and then cover all the plumbing and fittings to take rainwater from the pavilion and deliver it to the tank. Then finally, I'll install the solar panel and set up the pump and other off-grid electrical parts in a mini pump house at the back of the tank. Okay, so here we go. A flat and level spot was excavated behind the pavilion and a concrete curb poured, then filled with pea gravel. 4x4 four four posts sit in galvanized saddles that are secured to the curb with anchor bolts. 2x4 and 2x6 rails are added between these posts on all sides. Corrugated galvanized panels are attached to these rails to complete the tank surround. So the real work starts with shovel and wheelbarrows, with the occasional break to pet a cat. When this spot is flat and level, I then dig a trench for the drain. Water that accumulates inside the curb walls needs to drain away. This trench will move water from under the tank into a dry well where it will absorb into the ground. More on that later. I'll build the forms from 1x8s with the inside form walls made in two pieces. They have a 45 degree cut to make stripping the inside forms easier. A mending board across this cut will hold the forms together during the pour. Cleats added to these 1x8s will make attaching stakes easier as well as clamping the forms together on the ends. Then I can screw the outside form walls together. and I'll line up this wooden box to the pavilion piers, then pound in stakes and screw them to the form cleats. Checking and adjusting for level and square as I go along. Then the inside walls are clamped and screwed together. They are leveled and squared and temporary spacers are added. Some of the stakes were too tall, so I trimmed them with a handsaw. With the forms in place, I then add the pipes to the dry well. 
There will be a perforated pipe to collect water under the tank, and this is connected to a pipe for the tank overflow. With the pipes and fittings cut and laid out, I'll add some drain fabric. And the cats come to inspect the work. I can start to glue the pipe and fittings and add some drain rock as I go. We fired up the concrete mixer and spent a few hours filling the forms. I applied some vegetable oil to the inside of the forms so the concrete wouldn't stick. The curb will be reinforced with rebar and it's suspended from wire to keep it centered in the forms during the pour. I added some anchor bolts before the concrete set up. Then covered the forms with plastic and left overnight. Here's the mending board coming off an inside form wall. I found this worked well and made it easy to strip the inside walls. I'd say the best part about concrete work is stripping the forms. Very satisfying. For more detail on the form work, then see part one of my previous series, the 1200 gallon tank. With that done, I'll dig the hole for the dry well. Then line it with fabric and add some drain rock. I set half a rain barrel in the hole and ran the drain pipe into it. Then filled in rock around it and then finally topped with some dirt and sod. I keep the new concrete damp and covered with plastic for a few weeks while it cures. I roll out fabric and fill the space with coarse drain rock then top this with pea gravel. Once this is packed and leveled, we can set the tank in place. In the next episode, I'll build the fence walls that surround the tank to support the pipes. Then later, I'll cover all the plumbing and install the fittings to connect the tank to the rain gutters on the pavilion. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. To be notified when part two is posted, then hit the bell button. Enjoy the rest of your day, stay safe, and thanks for watching.